hey guys, your doc told you that you need an MRI fusion biopsy. So how are they going to fit that MRI in the operative suite? Well, that's not exactly how it works. Stay tuned and we'll give you some insight and expectations about how an MRI fusion biopsy works. Hey guys, Doc Haps here. So your doc told you that you need an MRI fusion biopsy. Well, we're gonna go over what to expect, some of the logistics, some of the aftercare and potential problems with an MRI fusion biopsy. We'll compare it to a regular traditional ultrasound guided biopsy. And hopefully this uh, video will provide you some value and insight. An MRI fusion biopsy of the prostate usually comes after an evaluation or either an elevated PSA, or maybe you've had a previous biopsy and it was negative, great, benign, no cancer, but your PSA continues to rise or your doc recommended an MRI of the prostate and that MRI revealed something abnormal that your urologist wants to investigate. And so an MRI fusion biopsy typically is the next step. So, Let's go over a little bit what an MRI is. You may have had one already, but basically an MRI is a fancy x-ray that does not use radiation. It uses a special magnet to assess the differences in water composition in your cell. Basically, an MRI of the prostate looks specifically at the prostate. It's like taking a telescopic lens and turning it down such that all you see is a prostate and some of the surrounding tissue. So once you do an MRI of the prostate, it typically takes about an hour and a half, sometimes an hour. You'll have an IV placed and there's a series of sequences and the technician will update you as to when to breathe, when to hold your breath. They'll tell you when you're going to get this IV medication and all this works to give us the best pictures so that the radiologist can tell us if there's anything abnormal, funny looking going on within the prostate. MRI of the prostate interpretation is based on not only how the prostate looks, but also whether certain areas light up or get any abnormal blood supply that may differentiate itself from regular benign tissue or just normal appearing prostate cells. And if there's any abnormal areas, the radiologist can, with their computer system, circle those areas, and they would call those areas regions of interest. And they often should put a grade on that. So that grading system is called the PIRAD system, P-I-R-A-D-S. MRI should tell us not only the size of the prostate, if there are any regions of interest or lesions within the prostate, it would also look at the surrounding areas just locally, just right adjacent to the prostate to see if there are ab any abnormal lymph nodes. The PIRAD system is a system that helps decipher if there's any potential risk of biologically significant cancer. Again, uh, the grading system ranges from one through five, five being the most suspicious. So the grades one and two basically are not suspicious for cancer. Grades three is kind of equivocal. They're not sure if there's biologically significant cancer, but they can't rule it out. Grades four and five lesions indicate that there is some significant suspicion for potentially significant cancer. Again, it's essential to note that an MRI will not tell you whether there is cancer there or not, but it will give us an idea if there's any potential abnormalities that might be suspicious for cancer. It's only then that a biopsy would tell us if there's truly cancer there or not. So most urologists will recommend biopsying lesions four and five and uh, not biopsying lesions that are graded one and two. The three lesions, it's sort of a mixed bag. Some urologists recommend biopsying those areas, others don't. 
there continue to be studies to try and investigate whether these lesions should be biopsied or not. So that's the MRI, and that's the basics of understanding how the MRI works, what we're looking for. So the next step is to kind of go over what a traditional biopsy would be, and then we'll compare it to the MRI fusion biopsy. There's a lot of similarity. The, a traditional biopsy is called a transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy. Basically, what happens is you come into the office or, and it's typically done under either a local anesthetic or some men will undergo a twilight. You lie on your side. What we do is we do a prostate exam and we use an ultrasound and place that into the rectum, kind of like a prostate exam, and we visualize the prostate gland. We visualize it through the rectal wall. So what we typically do, we give you some local medicine to numb the area up. We take measurements of the prostate and then we map the prostate out. We divide the prostate into right and left sides and then there's a front, a middle, and a back aspects of the prostate. Typically, we'll divide each side in thirds and then again in half. So there's six areas of each side of the prostate that we would map out. Each side would have six biopsies for a total of 12 biopsies. And that's today is a standard traditional 12-4 prostate biopsy where, where 12 samples are obtained, nicely sampling the areas of the prostate. So there's, they're kind of random but they're also distributed evenly to hopefully get us the best result and without missing any. So what the MRI fusion biopsy has done is it has may allowed the traditional prostate biopsy to be more precise. So a traditional prostate ultrasound may not see those lesions that are identified on the MRI. So how do we visualize those? So the smart computer engineers figured out a way to use that real-time ultrasound and overlay the previously obtained MRI. We, there's a GPS-guided system where we connect the real-time ultrasound to the MRI on a computer software system so that when I adjust my ultrasound, the previously loaded MRI which you have already obtained, also moves with it. And this is some computer magic that I don't understand, but it works well. And the goal is to precisely biopsy those areas that the MRI identifies. So let me draw it out on this schematic just to give you a general uh, bird's eye view of what's happening. So traditionally, we might biopsy certain areas within the prostate that are back here. And we distribute these evenly, so we sample the prostate evenly. But let's say your MRI told us that there's an area way over here, or potentially over here, that the traditional ultrasound-guided biopsies might not see and might miss. What the MRI fusion biopsy is it allows us to precisely target that lesion and sample that area so that we're not missing anything and we get the most accurate results. So I feel that an MRI fusion biopsy allows us to not only do a better biopsy, but also prevents us from doing multiple biopsies where you might miss one, or miss something on the first time round. You get an MRI, you identify something, and then you have to do a second biopsy. The thought, in, at least from my perspective, would be if you have a suspicion that there might be prostate cancer, let's get an MRI to see if there's any lesion. If there's a lesion, you should definitely biopsy that area. Not only target that specific area, but also do a 12 sample, what we call systematic biopsy. If there's no lesion on the MRI, then it's a discussion. What's your risk? If you're 50 and you have a high PSA, the MRI doesn't see anything. In about 10 to 15% of men, the MRI may miss things. So 
I still recommend a biopsy in that gentleman. Alternatively, if you're an older gen and your PSA has been relatively stable, is not changing fast, we end up getting an MRI and it's negative, maybe we just watch it and we feel reassured that there's nothing significant and we're willing to take that 10 to 15% chance that the MRI may be a so-called false negative. That's a more nuanced discussion that you'll have with your doctor, and there's different philosophies on that. Let's talk about the after effects. What are the potential risks or pitfalls after a biopsy? So both with the MRI fusion and the traditional biopsy, if it's done transrectally, the potential side effects can be the same. Basically, in one to three out of 100 men, they may get a significant infection. So 97% of men do great, no problem. But again, in that one to 3%, those men may get sick enough with fever, chills, feeling awful, where they need to come into the hospital and get intravenous antibiotics to kill an inf infection that may have been caused by the biopsy. Other issues become bleeding. Bleeding is the most common thing, and most men should expect some bleeding, typically in the stool, some in the urine, and definitely in the ejaculate or sperm fluid. So this, the bleeding in the urine and stool typically go away within a couple of days. If you're on a blood thinner, definitely talk with your doc about when it's best to restart that. But the best thing you can do is avoid constipation so you're not straining and stay hydrated. Those are two key components regardless. If the urine becomes progressively bloodier, if you're having clots or struggling to urinate, then you got to let your doc know. The other uh, issue is bleeding in the ejaculate fluid, and that can persist for some time. As we've kind of mentioned or talked about in previous videos, the prostate makes a significant amount of the ejaculate fluid. And we're kind of, when we kind of poke around in that prostate, we're going to cause some bleeding. And that blood may be more significant initially when you ejaculate right after the prostate biopsy. And then it will get better uh, as the days and weeks go on. But it's not unusual to see some blood in the sperm or ejaculate fluid, even a weaker or two to three after the biopsy. Lastly, your doc should either call or touch base with you within about a week. Most results are available within a week. And he'll follow up with you and you can make arrangements by calling the office. Hopefully this video gave you some value added insight into what an MRI biopsy is, how it differentiates itself and is similar to a traditional transrectal ultrasound biopsy. Please check out our other videos. They may go into more depth on certain aspects that may pertain to you and you find interesting. I appreciate your time. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.